Do you remember the Raiders of the Lost Ark movies, where at the end of the movie, Harrison Ford finds the treasure room? It's filled from floor to ceiling with gold. You know, I'm watching this thinking, how could I possibly carry all that out before the bad guys show up? This is what I think of when I see the opportunities as it relates to China. Most of the ways I've been able to do this takes very little capital. But once I did build up some capital, the opportunities truly became nearly endless. And I'd like to share some of these ideas with you. Hi, Murray Smith here, and I've been manufacturing in China for over five years now. We've been importing and contract manufacturing for many American and European distributors and manufacturers. So how can a person like you profit from this Asian phenomenon? I mean, you can't pick up a newspaper or look at anything on TV these days without hearing about China. A crush of people greeted Stephen Harper in old Shanghai today. A warm dose of hospitality for the Prime Minister on his last stop in mainland China. Harper is now in Hong Kong, trying to reach out to a different crowd. And traveling with him, our senior correspondent, Terry Malewski. Terry? Well, Wendy, Stephen Harper has now arrived in what is, as he put it, one of the largest Canadian cities in the world, Hong Kong, which has 200,000 Canadian residents. Harper is here banging the drum for Canadian business after wrapping up his challenging trip to mainland China. Take a look at the Shanghai skyline. This is the financial capital of a nation which spends a trillion dollars a year on imports, but only a tiny fraction of that from Canada. Harper acknowledged that the competition for trade is intense and that Canada is just scratching the surface so far. Uh, this is an extremely dynamic and competitive marketplace. Um, it's not just that it's growing, um, but you know, you have all the major players from the world uh, that are here. Classic way that most people think of is import-export. And this is a very simple way to get started, but I really don't recommend it unless you really know what you're doing. Importing means that you're buying a product in China and bringing it back for sale. Now, I've done some of this, and I'll certainly help you get started, but there are a few serious pitfalls and danger areas that I need to warn you about. That whole game is about eliminating surprises like tariffs, customs issues, bad quality products, licensing your products in the United States if applicable, product liability insurance, and that's just on the U.S. side. In China, you have to worry about knowing who you're dealing with, not getting the product quality you ordered, what's happening to your wire transfers, dozens of serious issues. I actually imported four containers of scooters from China. I did make money, but it was a heck of a learning experience. I'm now importing a garage door opener, selling to big box retailers. The primary way I made money was contract manufacturing, that is, making custom items for U.S. and European manufacturers and distributors. The nice part about that business is that I didn't take the risk for selling the product. My job is simply to audit the factories, help the product get manufactured, and then get it shipped. It's a fantastic business, but the sales cycle can be kind of long, so you have to be prepared for that. But there are some ways to speed that process up, and I'd like to tell you about that as well. That being said, I'd like to discuss ways to get you into this business. This may be one way for you to participate in the Asian boom. If you'd like to join me on a conference call, I'll give you all the details. That way, we can decide together, you and I, if this could be a way that we could work together. I mean, since I have the factory relationships, the experience, and I can even tell you how to pick up new business. You bring in the business, and I'll find the factory or source the product for you. I think we have something pretty cool here. Now, there's something else going on in the global marketplace right now that you really need to be aware of, and you might want to consider taking advantage of it. Here, let me explain. 20 years ago, the average Chinese family was primarily concerned about keeping food on the table. Even today, food costs represent 25% of a family's income. I mean, that compares to roughly 10% or less in the United States for the average American family. Now, that being said, the Chinese are making more money. I mean, obviously, you can read it on the news all the time. There's a rise in the middle class in China. It's a phenomenon that's only occurred in the last 10 years, and the Chinese love to eat. Now, I'm in China very often, and I get a chance to see different trends. One thing I keep noticing is I see very few American companies actually doing business in China. I mean, we buy all their stuff, but we aren't selling much into China. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's because of governing laws and restrictions. Well, let me just tell you something. I see a lot of European brands in China. I see a lot of other Asian brands in China. They're just, for some reason, there's a shortage of American brands. I mean, yes, there are some trade restrictions, but not as many as you'd think. Now, maybe you can see where I'm going with all this. 
but I think there's a fantastic opportunity for American restaurants in China. Last February, I had a simple idea. After about three cold calls, I found the right concept. The owner was so excited, he said he'd put up a quarter million dollars of his own money and find us $4.75 million more to build restaurants in China. Within 90 days of meeting him, we got funded. I didn't put up any of my own money. And since this video you're watching right now is widely distributed on the internet, I really don't want to give all the details like names and contact info in this video. However, if you'll join me next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll give you the names, website addresses, the announcements, and details. This is something that you could do as well. I mean, I didn't do anything that you couldn't do, okay? And I'm going to tell you how to do it. I have already developed all the operating teams in China. If you want to bring us deals, I'll teach you how to do it. And I'll sign a contract with you and make you a part owner. So this is all really very exciting and really very real. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I help you, a potential competitor, and tell you all my secrets? Well, there's several very obvious reasons for this. The main reason is that China is a huge market. I mean, for every one person in the United States, there are four people in China. If I give you information on how to be successful in China, chances are you'll eventually need some resources on the ground over there. That's where I come in. But even if you don't, like any industry, the world is a very small place. I'd rather know someone like you doing something successful, being a friend, and maybe we'll do something down the road together. For example, on Tuesday, we'll talk a little bit about Alibaba.com and some of the other sourcing websites. I mean, I use Alibaba.com myself sometimes, but when my wife calls, and by the way, she's Chinese, and she's from Shanghai, fluent in Mandarin, Shanghaiese in English. There are certain qualifying questions that she asks that factory in China before we go any further. There's also some very important information that I need to give you if you're going to work directly with Chinese factories and suppliers. You need to have this information if you're going to try to do this on your own. And we'll talk more about that on Tuesday. By the way, I'll be focusing our discussion on Tuesday about how to build a company that will take advantage of the Chinese boom. I'm going to operate under the assumption that your capital is limited. However, for those of you who do have capital, there are a couple of opportunities that I want to mention to you. We will have a questions and answers session on Tuesday, so please remind me if that's of interest to you. Unfortunately, foreigners have been restricted from buying real estate in China for now. I expect that to change in the near future, but there are several under the radar ways that you and I can take advantage of the Chinese-American relationships. Or like I said, you can do this on your own. I think there is another way that I think you could actually double your money over the next three to five years if you do happen to have investment capital. It really doesn't have anything to do with me directly, but I'll show you how to do it and we'll talk about it Tuesday night. Stick with me on this, and I'd like to share some other ideas with you. And there might even be a way that you and I could partner together. Because you see, I have a lot of resources in China. I know the right factories. I know the right factory owners. And I even know many government officials that can really help out a, a business owner like us. But I can't be in two places at the same time. And that's where you come in. Now, if you join us on the call Tuesday, and I told you I'm going to have some incredible information Tuesday, join me. You'll get the real nuts and bolts of some of the tremendous opportunities that I'm working on in China, and you'll have a real valuable resource. But I think the best thing is what you get at the end of the webinar. I'm going to give you my direct phone number and email address. Furthermore, on Tuesday, I'm going to announce the website address, which has all the restaurant offering information, and you can get the executive summary business plan off that site, and you can use that for your own deals. You can set an appointment with me and discuss any entrepreneurial venture with me directly. You're not going to talk to my employees or my assistant. You're going to be able to talk to me. I'll be courteous and give you my thoughtful responses and a real possibility of working together. Now, this is different than the other webinars where the host is unreachable. That's not the case here because I really want to partner with you if you're the right person, if you have the right idea, or if you want to use my idea and you're the right person, we'll do this together, especially if any of your opportunities or ideas relate to China. And if I think you have an idea that's not going to fly, I'm going to tell you that too. I think you deserve honesty. I'm willing to invest time with you. This opportunity is different than anything you'll hear on the internet. So I hope you'll join me this Tuesday. Now, if you're watching this on your iPhone, Android, or other PDA, then I need to tell you how to register. Okay, you ready? Go to MFG, like manufacturing, MFGinAsia.com, and click on the webinar link, and you can register from there. Hey, I hope to see you online Tuesday. Take care.